There's quite a lot I can tell you about boomerangs, but before I do, let me remind you that a boomerang can be dangerous. Well, I don't think a boomerang on its own ever hurt anyone, just when it's traveling fast and comes to a sudden stop on your head. So here's a few rules. Number one, use your common sense. Be sensible, don't throw a boomerang when it may hit someone or damage anything. No people, cars, traffic, no animals, no property. Rule number two, don't have a bunch of mates standing around you. To make a great target, remember a boomerang comes back. What you're really throwing is a bench stick at yourself. Rule number three, don't take your eyes off the boomerang. You can bet your bottom dollar, the one time you aren't watching is the time your boomerang comes all the way back. And that's ouch. Rem rule number four, Remember and use all the other three rules. So the first thing you need to know is how to hold a boomerang. There's lots of ways you could hold it like that and that. Lots of ways and only one of them will work. We've made it easy for you. This boomerang can be thrown with the right or left hand. I'm going to show you right handed first. So what we've done is we've put an X on the boomerang, on the back of the boomerang. If you put that X into the palm of your hand, then you're holding the right bit. Okay? That's the only way this boomerang is going to come back if you hold it this way. X in the palm of your hand. You'll see on here that I've got a flight edge. This is the edge that you look for when you're buying a boomerang. If it doesn't have one of these on it, it's never going to come back. These ones from Mananura, they come back. So you hold it like that and we turn it around and we're ready to throw. So that's how you hold a boomerang. Right, there are five things to think about when you're uh, getting ready to throw a boomerang. The first one is direction. What we do is we look for the wind. So if the wind's coming from over here, then we throw it 45 to the wind. Now what I normally do is uh, just look for the wind. I can feel it on my face. But if you like, you can pick up a bit of grass and you can throw it and you can see which way it's blowing. There's not much wind today, but if you want the grass to blow onto your body, that gives you the direction that the wind's coming from. We throw, at 45 degrees to the wind from there so we turn and we would aim over here so that's your direction now the height you want to throw it up a little bit I think about 30 degrees so I'd be looking at the trees over there and I would pick a tree that's at about 45 degrees to where the wind is and I'd look to the top of the tree and that would give me a, a mark for my height okay next thing you do is you have the spin All right. Now, as I showed you before, with putting the X in the palm of our hand, what we want to do is an action that gives it spin. If you don't spin the boomerang and you just throw it with a lot of force, it's not going to come back. It needs to rotate a lot. So we need to practice this action quite a bit. So what I'd like you to do is just keep practicing that action until it feels comfortable. It's an unnatural feel. But the action for throwing is a little bit like casting a fishing rod. You're cast a fishing rod over there, all right? Or whipping a bullwhip, bang. Okay, so that's your spin. The next one is angle. What we've got to do is tip the boomerang a little bit. So if you think of it like the clock, that's 12 o'clock and that's three o'clock and that's six o'clock. The angle of tipping is one o'clock, okay? This tip, when it's rotating, will actually help the boomerang climb and stay up. If you do it at 12 o'clock, it will go and turn, but it will lose height and fall into the ground, so it won't make it all the way around. So one o'clock, okay? If you go too high, what will happen is the boomerang will climb up and come back down, come back quite fast. So certainly never anything more than one o'clock. If you do it, a lot of American people tend to throw it a bit like this. It must be some game that they play, maybe baseball, I don't know it but they tend to throw sideways, and that's really dangerous. The boomerang will climb straight up, come back down, and when it's coming back down spinning, it often cuts and will come down and really hurt you, so it's quite dangerous. Don't do it. One o'clock. All right, so now we're ready to throw the boomerang. Force is the last one. What do we do We practice with force? I want the first few throws to just to be quite gentle and work on spin. It's not going to come all the way back. What we'll do is we'll do Take, practice those things and we'll come back. So now you've had your practice and we've got the spin right. That's the most important thing. What I want you to do is take three or four throws 
just gently, not too much force, so that you can gauge how hard you're going to need to throw it to get it all the way around. So these first throws are just gentle. So just have a quick practice. Look, there's the wing coming straight towards me. So I turn at 45, angle it a little bit, and just give it a little throw. Okay? Now that's going to come round and hit the cameraman, which nearly did. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we have another little practice. Give it a little throw. That's coming around. That's fine. Okay, and just throw it a little bit harder for the third one. Okay, and again, that's going to hit the cameraman. Okay, well, we've got a very terrified cameraman, but we've had a little practice. Okay, remember direction, angle, force, spin, and tip. Okay, now I mentioned earlier that these boomerangs can be thrown with the right or left hand. Let me explain how this is done. I'm actually left-handed, so I'm actually better at throwing with my left hand than the right, but they can be both thrown both ways. I explained before we have to have a tip, which is at one o'clock, okay? So if you imagine that I'm going to throw it at that angle with that spin, if I can transfer that to my left hand and keep that angle the same and tip it and throw it over my head, not like that, that will just bury itself in the ground, but keep that, that tip that angle at one o'clock and throw it with this hand, it will work just the same. Now one of the things that um, most people want to do when they throw a boomerang is try to catch it. That's up to you. I don't want you to catch it. I make boomerangs with these hands and if I hurt my hand, I'm out of, I'm out of action. So I just let it land on the ground, I can pick it up, I can do it again. If I, this clunks me on the back of the fingers, I might break a finger. Remember, these were originally a, a weapon, a, t a tool for hunting, okay? Now, a, a little game that the um, Aboriginal uh, people of Australia, the Aborigines did, is um, they taught their children to put something about 20 paces in front of them. The way that they were walking, this is a hunting technique, because remember, these were hunting, and when they threw it, it would go around, and they would be walking. So it would land where they're going to be by the after the amount of time it's taken to go around. So they would place something in the ground, 20 paces in front, and then have them throw it, spin it round. It's a little bit harder because you have to get more spin and make it land 20 paces in front of them. That's a good game. All right. So to finish with, um, I'm just going to demonstrate a left-handed throw and we'll see if we can make it land about 20 paces in front of them. You all right? So angle one o'clock. There you go. Okay, well that's it. Have fun, stay safe, enjoy yourself. Room rings.